All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Mel Anthony A. Atienza, and I'll be the first presenter from the second batch of five reporters assigned to discuss RA-9285 or Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004. So I'll be specifically tackling on the Chapter 1 or General Provision of the said law, RA-9285. So let's first have a take a look at the discussion outline. So we have six topics, as you can see, six provisions for this Chapter 1. Basically, um, we'll be dealing with the general provisions beginning with Section 1 or the title, Section 2, Declaration of Policy, Section 3, Definition of Terms. So in this part, ito yung medyo may broad and discussion tayo kasi medyo marami siyang laman. Ano? Section 4, Electronic Signatures in Global and E-Commerce Act. Section 5, um, Liability of ADR Provider and Practitioner. And lastly, Section 6, Exception to the Application of this Act. So the discussion of these provisions, of course, will be supported by some Philippine jurisprudences or cases, but just very encompassing lang ano po in the interest of time. And before delving into the first section, please bear with me kasi medyo malawak yung coverage niya, but I'll try my best to squeeze in yung mga topics. So it's essential to recognize that this introductory chapters, um, chapter rather serves as a foundation guiding our understanding throughout the subsequent discussion which our next reporters will present so it it um provide the the lay ground for providing crucial insights that will enhance our appreciation of the entire RA9285 all right so to not keep you waiting let's begin with the first section section 1 which is title so this RA9285 is an act to institutionalize the use of alternative dispute resolution system in the Philippines and to establish the Office for Alternative Dispute Resolution and for other purposes. So for the brief title of this act, according to Section 1, this act shall be known as the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004. So for brevity, we'll be using ADR. So to know the spirit and the intent of the law, will delve into the Declaration of Policy under Section 2. So accordingly, it is hereby declared that the policy of the state to actively promote una, yung party autonomy in the resolution of disputes. So this is one of the elements. Along our discussion, we'll um, encounter several elements of the ADR, kung ano yung pinaka um, purpose, primordial purpose of the ADR. So ito yung isa, yung party autonomy. Pangalawa is the freedom of the party to make their own arrangements to resolve disputes. So it, another element yan, ano, may kalap, kalayaan ang parties kung sa paanong paraan nila gustong maresolbahan yung kanilang issues. And purpose of this is um, toward the end, the state shall encourage and actively promote the use of ADR as an important means to achieve dalawa. First is the speedy and impartial justice. And pangalawa, of course, to declog yung court dockets natin. Of course, ang ultimate purpose naman natin, mabawasan yung mga kaso sa mga courts natin, um, ultimately sa ating Supreme Court. At of course, speedy and impartial justice, um, one of the uh, important uh, contemplation of the policies ng mga government offices natin na mapababa yung mga kaso. As such, the state shall provide means for the use of the ADR as an, as an efficient tool and an alternative procedure for the resolution of the cases in the Philippines. Likewise, the state shall enlist active private sector participation in the settlement of disputes through ADR. So, in encourage din natin yung mga private sectors. So, this act shall be without prejudice to the adoption by the Supreme Court of an ADR system such as ito, mediation, conciliation, arbitration, or any combination thereof as means of achieving, again, yung speedy and efficient means of resolving cases pending before all courts dito sa Pilipinas, which of course shall be governed by such rules as the Supreme Court may approve from time to time. Okay, so um, this part is where we will broaden our discussion as this Section 3, Definition of Terms, contains terminologies which help uh, which will help us better understand and appreciate the entire ADR law so we will be familiarizing with the terms all right okay let's first have these five terms first is the alternative dispute resolution system it means any process or procedure used to resolve a dispute or controversy other than by adjudication of presiding judge of a court or an officer of a government agency so hindi po siya judge hindi siya um, government officer 
as defined in this act, it shall be a neutral third party. So let's bear in mind yung neutral third party, another element sa ADR na dapat yung namamagitan ay neutral na tao. So uh, this neutral third party participates to assist yung resolution ng kanilang issues which includes yung mga na-mention ko kanina, arbitration, mediation, conciliation, kasama din yung mga early neutral evaluation, mini trial, or any combination thereof. So later, we'll dig deeper on this kinds of the ADR para we better understand it. Next is ADR provider. So ito yung mga institutions or persons accredited as yun nga, mediator, conciliator, arbitrator, arbitrator, neutral evaluator, or any person exercising similar functions in any alternative dispute resolution system. So this is, of course, without prejudice to the rights of the parties to choose yung mga accredited individuals nila to act as yung mga nasabing mga tagapamagitan sa kanilang dispute. Um, sabi nga nila, another element ito ha, may karapatan lagi ang parties na piliin kung sino yung mamamagitan sa kanilang dispute. That's another element of the ADR. Whenever referred to in this act, the term ADR practitioners, yun din ang tawag sa providers, ano? ADR practitioners shall generally refer to, the, to such individuals na may mention natin. Next, letter C. Authenticate means to sign, execute, or adopt a symbol or encrypt a record in whole or in part intended to identify the authenticating party and to, ad to adopt, accept, or establish the authenticity of a record or term. So what is material here is the authentication and approval. Ano? Next is arbitration. Ito na yung isang kind of ADR natin. It means a voluntary dispute resolution. We hear the word voluntary. That's another element of the ADR. Kailangan voluntaryo ang pagpasok ng uh, um, magkabilang panig o ng mga parties sa mga ADR system natin like in this case, arbitration. So voluntary daw yung ang na proseso ito, arbitration in which one or more arbitrators appointed in accordance with the agreement of the parties or rules promulgated pursuant to this act resolve a dispute by rendering an award. So what is material here is merong award. We, we, we take note of that as arbitration may award. Later, we'll um, differentiate arbitration from the other kinds of the ADR like mediation later. Arbitrator, so ito yung tao na nag uh, uh, na appointed to render yung award sa isang arbitration process um, that is subject of arbitration agreement. So before um, continuing with the other terms, let us first have a jurisprudence or some cases in relation to the um, arbitration. So the first case is Frabel Fishing Corporation versus Philippine American Life Insurance Company. So... Um, will just be very encompassing lang tong kasong to. And um, just to make the, the case short, so in, in the facts of the, the case, Phil Am Properties Corporation, Philippine American Life Insurance Company, and the Perf Realty Corporation entered into agreements for the construction of Phil Am Life Tower. So the dispute arose over alleged violations of the agreements, including yung non-construction of partition wall and reduction of floor area. So the petitioner referred this matter to the Philippine Dispute Resol Resolution Center, but the respondents refused arbitration. So tumanggis arbitration. Ano? So the underlying issue in this case is that whether the parties should initially resort to arbitration. So the Supreme Court, speaking through Justice Sandoval Gutierrez, ruled in the affirmative, yes, kailangan daw initially mag-resort to arbitration. It, it explained that the 1998 Memorandum of Agreement mandates arbitration so the parties therefore are bound to abide by it so upholding to the agreement in the arbitration uh, the petition is denied so an indoctrinal lesson in this case it emphasizes the binding nature of arbitration agreements napakahalaga ng agreements it affirms that the parties are expected to abide by arbitration agreements in good faith so the court underscores the importance of upholding contractual commitments to an arbitration as an alternative method of dispute resolution, highlighting that disregarding such agreements would be a step backward in the context of international relations and alternative dispute resolution methods. So sometimes, this is really one of the prerequisites before going through sa mga courts. So we have to exhaust all the possible uh, means before um, re recoursing 
to the judiciary. Okay, another case is Mindanao Portland Cement Corporation versus McDonough Construction Company of Florida. So in the facts of the case in 1961, um, the hearing petitioner and the respondent signed a contract for a cement plant for construction. The dispute arose and petitioner suggested arbitration, but the hearing respondent um, opted for a payment uh, statement. So the petitioner sought court intervention to compel arbitration. So the issue in this case is whether the respondent is obligated to undergo the arbitration per the contract terms stipulated in sa kontrata eh. So the Supreme Court, speaking through Justice Bengson JP, um, ruled in the affirmative as well. It, the court noted disagreements on contract price and project delays. So the contract's arbitration clause had exceptions. But the disputes didn't fall under this. So the court mandated arbitration emphasizing its role in enforcing agreements, not deciding claim merits. So, hindi another element sa mga IDR uh, system natin, wala pong uh, dinidesisyonan talaga sa mga uh, ADRs, like arbitration. nag enforce lang ng kasunduan between the parties. Walang merits, or sabi nga sa arbitration, in the case of arbitration, walang award. So, the judgment to proceed to arbitration was upheld. Another another lesson na makapulot natin in this case is that it highlights the importance of honoring arbitration agreements. It asserts that disputes covered by a valid arbitration clause must undergo arbitration and and um, parties must adhere to, to such agreements. So the court's role is to enforce the arbitration agreement, emphasizing arbitration as a preferred method for settling contractual disputes sa mga parties as chosen ng mga parties na ito. So, lesson dun sa two previous cases natin is that very significant ang IDR, just like in these two cases where, where arbitration must be first undergone prior to ultimately resorting to judiciary to prevent din yung um, congestion and docket cases. Malaki talaga may tutulong nito to declog yung mga increasing or growing number of cases sa, sa mga courts and sa Supreme Court. Okay, um, let's continue with the definition of terms. Award. So, ito na yung ina-awards arbitration, either partial siya or final decision by an arbitrator in resolving the issue in a, in a controversy. Next, letter G, commercial arbitration is an arbitration um, commercial if it covers matter arising from all relationships of a commercial nature, whether contractual or not. Next is confidential information means any information relative to the subject of mediation or arbitration expressly intended by the source not to be disclosed. So, dapat hindi siya dinidisclose or obtained under circumstances that would create a reasonable expectation on behalf of the source that the information shall not be disclosed. So, it shall include um, tatlo ang sinabi dito sa definition. First is the communication oral or written, made in a dispute resolution proceedings, including yung mga memoranda, notes of work, notes or work, product of neutral party or non-party, uh, na, party or non-party participant as defined in this act. Pangalawa is yung oral or written statement made or which occurs during mediation or for purposes of considering, conducting, participating, initiating, continuing of recon reconvening mediation or retaining a mediator. And lastly, yung mga pleadings, motions, manifestations, witness statements, reports um, filed or submitted in an arbitration for expert evaluation. Next term, letter I, is convention award. It means a foreign arbitral award made in a convention state. In, in award siya sa isang convention state. Ano? Last is um, letter J, convention state. It means that the state is a member of the New York Convention. Okay, another cases, um, Ramago. So we'll just uh, have the importance or the doctrinal lessons in these two cases. First is the Ramago Incorporated versus Shemens Building Technologies. So um, this case emphasizes the importance of adhering to arbitration decisions and the principle of finality. So there's in a re there's a relation ano dun sa term na uh, define natin kanina, which is award. Pwede daw siyang 
uh, kailangan yung finality ang pinag-uusapan dito. It underscores that parties actively participating in, in arbitration proceedings na pumirma sa, sa kasunduan in terms of reference may be deemed to have waived jurisdictional objections raised belatedly. Yung mga na late na, na claims, ano? The doctrine discourages attempts to seek relief from judgments based on negligence or um, failure to appeal in a timely manner, promoting the conclusive nature of arbitration decisions. We are upholding dito no, yung pagiging final and executory ng arbitration din na award, yung conclusive nature niya. Mahalaga yon. And then, discourage natin yung endless litigation. As you can see, um, this is within the contemplation of principle of barred by latches then. Okay. Next case is Mabuhay Holdings Corporation versus Sebcourt Logistics Limited. So this case underscores the importance of respecting the chosen legal structure of a joint venture. It clarifies that corporate law principle, not partnership laws, apply to joint ventures organized as corporate entities. Sinasabi lang dito in relation to commercial arbitration, parties na may nature in, in corporation ay pasok sa commercial arbitration. So, the doctrine promotes the enforcement of arbitration awards consistent with the governing legal framework of the commercial arbitration. Next um, terms, first letter K, court. So, um, as referred dito sa Article 6 of the Model Law, um, pag sinabi court, it shall refer to the RTC, Regional Trial Court. Next is letter J, court annex mediation. It means any mediation process conducted under the auspices of the court after such court has acquired jurisdiction of the dispute. So, um, what is material is subsequent yung pag-acquire ng jurisdiction ng court. Ano. Next is court-referred mediation. Um, basically, the court is just referring back yung case if um, the court um, determined that the action is is still is still premature kumbaga pag prematurely commence siya in violation sa agreement the court is referring back the case to the mediation muna sabi nga natin we have to resort or exhaust yung mga ADR system natin like mediation next is letter n early neutral evaluation it means an ADR process wherein parties and their lawyers are brought together nas nang mas maaga in a pre-trial phase to present summaries of their cases and receive a non-binding assessment by an experienced neutral person with the expertise in the subject in the substance of that dispute. So, ito ay bago mag-trial. Ano? So, na nakaka-receive din sila ng assessment na non-binding sa pamamagitan ng isang neutral person again. Of course, this person must be expert in that field. Next is government agency letter O. It means a government entity, office, or officer other than a court that is vested by the law with quasi-judicial power to resolve or adjudicate dispute involving the government, its agencies, and instrumentalities. Next, terms. Um, international party. So it shall mean an entity whose place of business is outside the Philippines. So the term foreign arbitrator shall mean a person who is not a national of the Philippines. Next is mediation. It means, um, vol ito, ito na yung isang kind of ADR natin, kanining arbitration. Ito naman mediation. Voluntary process din siya. Another uh, element ng ADR natin, di ba? Voluntary process din siya in which a mediator selected by the disputing parties, another element, pinili siya ng, ng parties, facilitates communication and negotiation and assist the parties in reaching a voluntary agreement Regarding a dispute, there are several or various stages pagdating sa mediation. Um, pamula sa kanilang communication hanggang sa mag-negotiate mag -negotiate sila sa so negotiation stage until they um, arrive at a, um, a settlement or agreement to resolve their dispute kung papaano ang kanilang arrangement. So, um, the mediator, it means a person who conducts mediation. So, yun yung na maamagitan sa kanila. Mediation party means a person who participates in the mediation and whose consent is necessary to resolve the dispute. Consent, that's another element of the ADR. Mahalaga na consented nung both parties na nag-enter dito sa prosesong, so, prosesong to na sila ay mag-undergo nun. Kailangan yung consent. Next is mediation arbitration or yung tinatawag din na med-art. This is a step 
dispute resolution process involving both mediation at saka din yung arbitration. Example nito, just to illustrate, if an agreement cannot be um, reached through mediation, tawag doon ay deadlock. Deadlock na wala, eh, hindi na magkaunawaan yung both parties. The med arbiter, nakakaroon ng transition period. Yung mediation kasi nagiging, nagiging role niya na ay arbitrator, arbitrator na siya. Eventually, naggagawa siya ng decision na na binding doon sa both parties. So, med, mediation arbitration ang tawag doon. Mediation eventually transitions into arbitration. Okay, next um, terms. First, mini trial means a structured dispute resolution method in which the merits of the case are argued before a panel. So, may panel dito which comprises senior decision makers with or without the presence of neutral third person. Kahit walang neutral third person after which the parties seek a negotiated settlement. Um, We have to bear in mind na after to ng negotiation stage. Next is model law. It means the model law on international commercial arbitration na inadapt sa United Nations Commission on International Trade Law noong June 21, 1985. Next is New York Convention. It means the United Nations Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards approved in 1958 and naratify ng Philippine Senate under the Senate Resolution Number 71. So we also have or, or undergone ratification of this New York Convention. Kaya ano tayo? Uh, this law is approved. Okay. Next is non-convention award. It means a foreign arbitral uh, award made in a sen- in a state which is not a convention state. Non-convention nga. Next is no, um, non-convention award yun. And non-convention state naman, it means um, that the state is not a member of the New York Convention. Okay, lastly, um, this is the last definition of terms that we have in, in section 3. Uh, first is the non-party participant. So it means a person other than a party. Hindi siya party, hindi din siya mediator. But these are persons who participates in the mediation proceeding just as as a witness, whether in resource person, at whether in expert siya. Next is proceeding. It means a judicial, administrative, or other adjudic- adjudicative process, including related pre-hearing motions, conferences, and discovery. So, kasama din dito, included din yung mga preparatory activities or conferences. Next is record. Um, is record. It means an information written on a tangible medium or stored in an electronic or other similar medium retrievable form. And lastly, roster. It means a list of persons qualified to provide ADR services as as neutrals or to serve as arbitrators. So meron ding listahan ng mga pangalan ng qualified na mag-provide ng um, ADR services. So in relation lang sa last term that we have just mentioned, yung roster. So um last 2022 I was um luckily po chosen to represent my agency National Economic and Development Authority to take the comprehensive course on mediation for national government agencies in which I undergone uh, various lectures, examination, assessment, both um, written and oral, and um, several simulations. So fortunately, um, just last year, during the last quarter, I received this congratulatory letter flash on your screen po, informing me of the result that I was able to pass them all and informing me of the inclusion of my name in the OADR roster of trained ADR practitioners in the government. So that also grants me po eligibility to apply for the level 1 OADR accreditation. So that's it po for, for the roster and for the rest of the um term terminologists in section 3. Okay. Um let's now move on to the next section for electronic signatures in Global and E-commerce Act. So the Global and E-commerce Act, the provisions of of this act and its IRR Implementing rules and regulations shall apply to proceeding contemplated in this act. Applicable din dito yung nasa Global and E-Commerce Act. Dinefined kasi doon na yung electronic signature, it also refers to any distinctive mark, characteristic, or even sound in electronic form representing the identity of a person and attached to or logically associated with the electronic data, message, or or document, or any methodology 
or even procedures employed or adopted by a person and executed or adopted by such person with the intention of authenticating or approving yung electronic data message. So what is material here is yung authentication or yung approval ng tao. Next is Section 5, the liability of ADR provider and practitioner. So the ADR providers and practitioners shall have the same civil liability for the acts done in the performance of their duties as that of the public officers as provided dun sa isang uh, provision which is Section 38.1 Chapter 9 Book of the Administrative Code of 1987. Ang sinasabi dun, it refers to liability of superior officers. Ang, ang sinasabi dun, generally, a public officer shall not be civilly liable for acts done in the performance of his official duties. We know that naman na self, ano yun eh, parang defense din siya ng isang official na kapag in performance of his duty, then he shall not be civilly liable. But there's an exception to that if it clearly shows that there's existence of bad faith, malice, or gross negligence. So basically, ang sinasabi lang po dito dun sa section 5 ng uh, dinidiscuss natin act, applicable din yung liability that the superior officers in the administrative code have dito sa ating liability ng mga IDR practitioner and provider natin. So meron din silang liability. Next is um, section 6. We are down to the last provision of this chapter before wrapping our presentation. It talks about exception to the application of this act. So this law also provides enumeration on what areas should be exempted from the application of this act. So section 6, um, the provisions of this act shall not apply to resolution or settlement of the following. First is your labor disputes covered by Presidential Decree Number 442, otherwise as known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, and the IRR niya. Next is yung civil status of persons, hindi siya applicable dyan. The validity of marriage, so any ground for legal separation, uh, the jurisdiction of courts, next is yung future legitim, criminal liability, and lastly, those which by law cannot be compromised. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. It's a wrap for the presentation. I hope you all learned something and thank you for giving your time and for listening.